Good morning, YouTube. Today's video is going to be about what I think is the world's greatest ultralight tripod setup. Of course, that's entirely subjective and you may disagree with me, but for the first time in my 20 or so years shooting, I finally have a tripod that I feel checks all the boxes I care most about. This is the FLM CP26-2 travel tripod. It weighs 2.47 pounds, which for reference is nearly the same weight as a one liter bottle of water. It is a five section tripod with a maximum height of 54 inches and when folded, it is just over 17 inches. It can go down to 2.1 inches from the ground and it supports up to 26.4 pounds. I purchased this new from FLM Canada in January of 2021, so I've used it long enough to know that I love it and that it is very well made. The current price as of May 6th is $369 on FLM's website. Now, I don't plan to discuss gear very often on this channel. I think as photographers, we tend to fixate too much on gear, feeling like if we only had that lens or that camera or that tripod, it would take us to the next level. Companies, of course, capitalize on this by making marginal improvements in their equipment and then charging us tons of cash, making us think that if we don't have the latest and greatest, then we're not really serious about our craft. This is extremely effective for them. If you go stand in any gaggle of photographers and just listen, you're far more likely to hear conversations on megapixels and sensor size than anything on composition or color theory. The reality, of course, is that success in photography is far more about the time spent on the craft in the field than it is on the tools that we use. With all that said, at the end of the day, there's of course a need for the tools and there is a benefit to building a kit that suits your needs, your budget, and your style of photography. If you are anything like me, your photography kit is in constant evolution. For me, the tripod has been my biggest pain point for over 10 years now. I've gone through so many sets of sticks. The one thing I know for sure is there is no one tripod that can do everything. Currently, I have three tripods with varying weights, heights, strengths, and weaknesses. The FLM CP26 is what I use 80% of the time. For this tripod, I have two different head setups, and I'll go through those options as well after I get uh, finished talking about the tripod. There are a ton of different options to consider when purchasing the right tripod for you. For me, there were three primary considerations that I focused on. The price, the ratio of weight to stability, and then the flexibility or usability. First is price. I wanna start with this one because I think it's where most people focus on for obvious reasons. Me and pretty much every other photographer in the world has at one point in their photo journey said, they're just sticks. I mean, they don't need to be fancy. Why would I want to spend so much money? Those same photographers have then upgraded every year or so when their lower price tripod fails them in some way. In the end, they either spend way more money in the constant gradual upgrades or worse even have a tripod that fails, falls and breaks thousands of dollars worth of kit. I've done both. <laughs> After years of expensive and gradual upgrades in my tripod, I battled with a mediocre tripod setup. It was Gitzo's lightest weight one series at the time. Uh, the sections, no matter how strong I would turn the knobs, they would slowly retract. And then one day I was near a stream, I reached down to grab a rag to clean my front element. And when I bent down, the tripod went straight into the water and landed on a rock. Fortunately, all I lost was a polarizer and a neutral density filter and not my entire kit. But still, this was enough of a wake-up call for me to accept that I was wrong and that it might be time to invest in a better setup. When it comes to price, there's a very big difference between the cheapest tripods on the market in that $500 to $100, or sorry, $50 to $100 range versus the mid to high range at $350 to $450, which is what this lightweight setup costs. As you go above that mid to high range, more into that really right stuff end of the market, where a comparable model will run more than double that of this model here, you're talking about much less bang for your buck, that you start to see a diminishing return. Uh, at $369, I think the FLM CP26 hits that sweet spot where you spend enough to get a quality product that's gonna last you a lifetime without spending extra money that could be better used on lenses, prints, or even photography trips. For reference, the comparable Really Right Stuff offering to this FLM tripod would be the RRS TFC 14 Mark II. They have the exact same weight at 2.47 pounds, but the Really Right Stuff is almost $900. For that price, I could have two of these tripods and still have money left over for some film. It isn't to say the really right stuff isn't worth $900, it's a fantastic tripod, it just wasn't the right one for my budget. Now, price is definitely the first spec that catches our eye, but it definitely shouldn't be the last. The second major consideration is the ratio of weight and stability. Generally speaking, the heavier the tripod, the more stable it's going to be. However, 
A, light tri a lightweight tripod can still be extremely stable in most scenarios. It is well built, you can safely and confidently place your precious kit on top of a lightweight tripod and come away with great images. As I mentioned, the CP26 weighs 2.47 pounds. Now as a five section tripod, you do have more risk of vibration when you fully extend all sections. To mitigate this, if I'm shooting in high winds or running water, or really anything that can cause camera shake, I'll only use the first three or four sections. Additionally, as this tripod does not have a center column, which is a feature that I really appreciate, you have a surprising amount of stability in this tiny frame. Ultimately, you need to consider for yourself which is more important to you, the weight or the stability. If you're like me and you do a lot of really long hikes to get to your destination, a lightweight tripod is going to be key. If you tend to shoot closer to your car or you don't do very long walks and the stability is going to be really important that you can shoot in any conditions, then you're going to want a sturdier tripod and that would be a better investment for you. In between, there are limitless <laughs> options, but for me, the CP26 is the perfect balance between lightweight and sufficient stability to get the job done. The third consideration is usability or flexibility. The usability refers to not just how easy a tripod is to set up, position, reposition, and collapse, it's also about how easy it is to transport and carry. This can be related to weight, but it also takes the size and bulk into consideration. A similar weight tripod to the CP26, but with only three sections, would likely be significantly taller when collapsed. Ultimately, just like your camera, the best piece of kit is the one that you have with you. So look at this honking thing here. This is my heavy duty tripod. I use it for shooting I do within a mile or so of my car. This is my favorite tripod to shoot with. It's rock solid, it's easy to use. It's also about six trillion pounds. It's nearly impossible to attach to a rucksack. In a long distance hiking situation, this tripod is completely useless to me. I would never reach my destination if I was trying to carry this. Now this tripod, which is fairly lightweight for its size, is just too tall when collapsed if you look at it compared to the FLM. If I had this sitting on the side of my rucksack, it would just be absurd. It'd be bouncing around my head. And having that extra weight on just one side of my rucksack, because that's how my pack is set up, I start to get back pain and shoulder pain after a long distance. So I would prefer to carry the CP26. With the uh, compact size, I can loosen all four of the knobs in just one motion and be set up in seconds. If I need to increase the range of my base, it's very simple using this nifty little tab on the base, but collapsing is even easier. You just bring it in and it clicks and locks, and I really appreciate that feature. Usability is the one thing that I think most people don't spend enough time thinking about when they set up to purchase a tripod. Rather than thinking about the aesthetics or the brand, you should be asking yourself questions like, how tall will the tripod be with my camera on top? How tall am I? How will it sit on my pack? How will it feel to carry on a three night backpacking trip? Will it fit in my carry on? These are all questions for you to consider before you pull the trigger on your purchase. Okay, so I think I made it clear. I really love this tripod. But let's do a quick summary of the pros and the cons before moving on to the two heads that I use on top of this tripod. I won't lie, coming up with cons was pretty difficult for me. I'm, I'm gonna get real petty here because <laughs> I had to dig deep to find things I didn't like about this tripod, but we'll start with the pros. It's lightweight, it's easy to carry, it has no problem with the DSLR and long lens, or even a large format camera. It has sufficient height for most situations, and it's very easy to shoot low to the ground. There's no stupid center column, it's a big pro, uh, I hate those. Nearly every lightweight setup has a center column, which just further reduces stability, adds vibration risk, and makes getting low to the ground nearly impossible. Now they do this because in order to have a compact tripod like this, you're likely to end up with a short tripod when fully extended. You'll see many folks use that center column to try and increase their maximum height. This is a huge mistake. You've now raised your center of gravity, increasing the risk that it's going to tip over. And then you've also added a ton of camera shake by extending that sail up the top of your camera. It undo, it'll undo a lot of the benefit of even using a tripod in the first place. So I would definitely avoid using a center column, especially on a very lightweight tripod. I also love how the click lock mechanism on the angle works, uh, on the angle of the legs. It just makes collapsing so fast and so easy. Now for the cons, again, I'm going to get really, really petty here because they're very minor, but the, the metal knobs drive me nuts. I shoot a lot in Rocky Mountains in the winter and various other cold and wet locations. These metal knobs get freezing to the touch. I have to remove my gloves sometimes to fiddle with settings and whatnot. And when I grab these knobs in the freezing cold, I just get angry. Uh, I always think of that kid in the scene from Christmas Story where he sticks his tongue to the flagpole. That's how I feel when I grab this tripod. 
when they get wet, which happens all the time, it can be really difficult uh, to shoot without these slipping. So tightening down the knobs can be difficult. Just holding it is a challenge. So I wish they were rubber like they are on all my other tripods. And I'm not sure if this is a decision for weight, aesthetics, or what, but it's my biggest complaint by far. It's not something I can't live with, but it's something I wish they would change on a future version. Second, and this one is nitpicky and really more my fault than anything else, but this tripod has serious pinch points at the bridge here. Because it's so small and compact, when you go to increase or de decrease the leg angle, it's pinch city up here. Uh, I've ended trips with massive blood blisters from this tripod just biting me. And again, it's my fault for trying to move quickly because I know this is an issue, but it's just a bloodthirsty monster. It's infuriating. But you can see here, as I go to hold this tab and extend, the webbing between my thumb and pointer finger is right here on the, the hinge. And that's really, it puts you right in the danger zone. So it's something to be aware of. Finally is the feet. And again, this is personal preference. I'm nitpicking, but it wasn't easy to find flaws. Uh, so I'm gonna put this on the cons list, even though it's, it's questionable at best. But the feet that come on the tripod are nice. They're useful for shooting in most scenarios. And they do come with a separate set of spiked feet. And both sets are nice and they work well and they're free, which looking at you really right stuff. Um, however, I ultimately removed the stock feet and replaced with these from Desmond. And you can hear the pop. These rubber feet really stick on, and when you want the spikes, you just pop them off. Uh, they're 20 bucks on Amazon. I have a link in the description. It's not an affiliate link. But these allow me to have both options on the tripod uh, without needing to carry an Allen key or deal with swapping in the field. They're extremely easy to use, and I would recommend it if you're like me and you like to utilize spikes occasionally, but not often enough to want to switch. Uh, if I'm shooting in a stream, I could dig the spikes into the mud and then quickly reposition, put the rubber feet back on, and then put the sticks on the rocks, right? So... Flexibility is really key when it comes to tripod for landscape photography, and these feet just give me a little bit more of an option. So now that we've covered the legs and why I think this particular set is optimal for my needs, let's get into the two setups that I use on top of the tripod. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm always trying to balance three things when it comes to evaluating my tripod setup. Cost, usability, and stability. You can't really pick all three. You get two. If you have a compact and stable setup, it's gonna cost more, much more. Uh, if it's lower cost and compact, say goodbye to your kit as it dies a horrible, horrible death. If it's low cost and stable, I hope you go to the gym regularly because it will be heavy. Uh, for me, I have two separate options. Here's option one. This is my ultra lightweight setup. This is the Really Right Stuff BC18. It weighs in at a whopping 3.7 ounces. That's less than a quarter of a pound. It can support up to 10 pounds of weight and it's extremely compact. It's only $140, and I love the lever release on the ball, and then it has a knob on top to tighten to the camera. That one part feels a little bit counterintuitive, as most ball heads use a knob to tighten and loosen the ball, and then some, like really right stuff, generally will use a lever to attach to the camera. It's the opposite here. And I'm not saying that's a con, because both the lever and the ball work great. It's just something that took a little bit getting used to, and sometimes it still trips me up a little bit occasionally when I switch from one type of ball head to the other. Now this is a quarter inch male thread, which makes it impossible to mount directly uh, onto the tripod. It was designed to work with their hot shoe attachment that they have or a clamp, not a tripod. For this, I took a piece of uh, scrap walnut from the garage. I added a quarter inch and three eighths inch threaded insert. And then I can just attach the uh, ball head to the adapter and then the adapter to the tripod. If you don't have access to tools to build an adapter, no worries, you can look in the description. I put a link for a Manfrotto adapter. It's $30, and I'll tell you that for what it is, the adapter's pretty heavy. It weighs just over a quarter of a pound, so it's actually heavier than the ball head itself. But with that said, that would bring you to a pound, uh, sorry, a half pound total, and I don't know of anything that's gonna give you that kind of performance for that weight. So the downside of this setup is that the maximum tilt of the ball head is only 45 degrees. I've never had this ball head mounted in a situation where I needed to look straight down, but it is a potential drawback if you tend to shoot towards the ground. Other than the range of motion, I don't have anything bad to say about this setup other than that it's a ball head and I usually don't like to work with a ball head. I shoot a lot of panos and large format film and for that I prefer to use a leveling base and pan tilt head. That brings me to setup number two. This is an Acrotec long lens head and it's sitting on top of an Acrotec leveling base. This setup is lightweight, easy to use, but it's expensive. New, these two items are just over $600 combined. However, on b and and some other websites, they have a purchase where you can buy them together, and it's $585, so still very expensive. These are rated to hold 25 pounds, so they land right near the max of the CP26. Aesthetically, they look like they were meant for each other. Uh, Acrotec makes two versions of this. There's the long lens head and the panoramic head. They're nearly identical. 
panoramic head is more expensive and it has some indexing on the bottom uh, of the base that I didn't really think I needed. I shoot a ton of panels on this and I assure you it works perfectly. The Acrotec long lens head with the leveling base total for about one and a half pounds, so it's still extremely lightweight, but a lot heavier than the quarter pound of the BC-18. They add about five inches of height, so taking the total max height to about five feet when you mount it on the CP-26. If you see me in the field, this is the setup that you'll most likely see me using. Although this setup was a tough pill to swallow cost-wise, uh, I've purchased four other pan tilt heads. I never use them. They're garbage. <laughs> um, the saying, buy nice or buy twice, in photography really should be more like buy nice or, or just keep buying. Uh, I will say in terms of price, the advantage of buying quality kit is that you, if you outgrow it and move into another area or you have different needs, it holds its value really well and you can resell it without taking much of a loss. I both, bought both of these heads uh, used, heavily used at that. I still paid about 70 to 80% of the new price. So compare that to those wonky looking paperweights that I now have. I couldn't sell them for enough to even justify selling them. So that's just money lost. So it's definitely an advantage of buying quality kit is that it does hold its resale value. The point is, with photography, as with all things, the key is to find a sweet spot to where you're getting a quality product that's gonna last a long time and meet your needs without breaking your budget. For me, the FLM tripod gives me exactly that. The build quality is superb, the customer service is fantastic, and the price is reasonable. Could spending more money give me a slightly better product? Yeah, probably. Uh, will it make me a better photographer? No. At the end of the day, I'm more than happy with the FLM CP26, and I would not hesitate to recommend it to anyone. All right, well, that's all I have today. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the kit that I mentioned today, please let me know. Uh, other than that, later today, I'm heading to my supplier for some mounting boards. Next week, we're going to be making a five to six foot print like the one that we have here and we'll go ahead and get it mounted. If you're interested in that, printing, mounting, framing, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and coming back next week. Uh, and in future videos, we'll be doing a lot of that type of stuff. Otherwise, I hope you have a great weekend and get out there and make some images. Mm -hmm.